Hey guys, Middle Jesus here. Now today I want to share with you my entire Dreamcast game collection. Now I have a little over 100 games for the Dreamcast, and what I love about the system is that, well, the console is very powerful, there's lots of great games on it, and there is a ton of variety. I think you're going to see that in this video. Let's take a look. I'm going to start this video by showing some of the new pressings of Dreamcast games that I have added over the last few years. And there's some cool stuff in here, including some games that were freshly ported over to the Dreamcast. You see FX Unit Yuki there, as well as Xenocrisis and Flea, one of my favorite indie games there. But then you also have Battle Crust and also uh, Dolphin Blue. Also a shout out to publisher Pixel Heart. They did this limited edition of Battle Crust here. I love the name Battle Crust, so weird. But this is a cool version of it because it comes obviously with a freshly minted physical copy of the game as well as the awesome soundtrack. Dolphin Blue is an arcade conversion that came to Dreamcast that my buddy Reggie turned me on to. And I'm very glad he did. Now. This game, I guess, originally had a game-stopping bug. I guess it was like in the third level, but now this version here is fixed. So a lot of fans of this game are very happy, myself included. Uh, as you can see by the gameplay footage here, it is very similar to Metal Slug, but with dolphins. And as you see, man, it just has excellent graphics. And then check this out, a developer sent me this. This is a demo prototype of a game called Tapeworm Disco Puzzle. <laughs> I thought that was pretty hilarious. So I don't know if this game actually has been released or not. This was kind of a surprise uh, that was in the mail to me, but I thought I would show you guys here because I don't have very many prototypes or demos like this, especially for the Dreamcast, but I thought this was pretty cool. And then a friend of mine has been taking some of the Dreamcast ports done by fans out there and pressing them onto CD and then putting them out in these physical versions here. And I have to say, these are really fascinating to see running on the Dreamcast. Uh, up in the corner there, you see Seven Mansions. So that is a Japanese only survival horror game that some fans did a complete English translation of. And Again, to get it physical on the Dreamcast is pretty cool, as well as the LucasArts collection down there. Uh, that's another one that has just a ton of classic adventure games running on the Scum VM engine, as well as some of these first-person shooters. Now, what's interesting about these is that, especially the Half-Life ones, they're kind of almost demos or proof of concepts. They're not really that playable, they're okay. You know, primarily because so many corners had to be cut to get them to even run on the Dreamcast. And so, you know, I don't see myself playing through all of Half-Life Paranoia or uh, Counter-Strike, but it's neat to see them on the system. And then lately I've been getting into Japanese imports for the Dreamcast. Now, sometimes, not always, but sometimes you can get the Japanese version of a game a little bit cheaper than you might get the English version. And, you know, if you don't know Japanese, well, often you can still play the games, you know, get through them just fine and potentially save a little bit of money. Here is Twinkle Star Sprites. And this is a really interesting shooter. As you see here, it's competitive. So the line down the center there, you play on the left and then you can play against the computer on the right or a second player. And what's interesting about this game is that you can sabotage your opponent. Again, I've never played a shooter quite like this, and it's really fun, very addictive. Now, the English version of Power Stone is a very collectible, very expensive game, and because of that reason, I have the Japanese version right here, which actually I think is just as good. So, again, it's got Japanese in there, which, you know, okay, it's, it can be a little confusing at times, but, you know, the gameplay is solid, and it's a classic for a reason. Here is the fighting game Guilty Gear X. Now I've had this one in my collection for a while, but I wanted to show it because it demonstrates all the stuff that sometimes comes with the Japanese version, including warranty cards. Uh, this one happens to have a little three inch uh, CD version of the soundtrack. 
as well as the Spine J card. So yeah, really cool version of this game. It's great. I love the music in this fighter. And then here are some of the more, I would say, collectible or heavy hitters that I have in my collection on the Dreamcast. And thankfully, I've had these in my collection for many, many years because some of these games are stupidly expensive. Uh, they've become very collectible over the last couple of years. And, you know, in many cases for good reasons, because they are all awesome games. Jet Grind Radio, of course, being one of them that... Well, it's one of those games that the system is kind of known for. Now, obviously there was the sequel that was released on the original Xbox, which, which was a pretty cool version of it. But if you got an original Dreamcast, you have to have the original Jet Grind Radio 2, right? Here is one of my all time favorite shoot 'em ups on really any system, but it's cool to get it on the Dreamcast. Uh, that of course is Gunbird 2. It's just one of those games that plays so well. Uh, I, this is actually one of my go-to shoot 'em ups When I'm looking to play one, this is one I often just pop in and play. Now, I should mention, though, that if you want to play this game, it's actually available on the Switch. It may be available on the PlayStation 5, 4, whatever, and the Xbox, but uh, I also have it on the Switch. So uh, it's cool that the game stays alive because it's so worth it. Another game I'm really glad I got years ago that, of course, is Mars Matrix. This is a game that just... I think kind of just, I don't know, it just goes up in value. I think a lot of people really want to own this game and play it. It is somewhat unique in that, you know, it's a bullet hell style game, but it has kind of a pre-rendered graphics look to it. It feels very unique. Uh, it, it, you know, in some ways, I think some people don't necessarily think that the graphics hold up. I don't mind them, but I definitely love the gameplay. This is another one that I pop in when I have my Dreamcast ready to go, it's it's awesome. Cannon Spike, I mean, what can I say about this game other than it's really kind of like a twin stick shooter and it is exclusive to the Dreamcast and it's super fun. It really, really is. Uh, it's a great arcade shooting game that looks and plays fantastic. Now, you know, it's amazing to me when I look at the prices of these games though. Uh, again, thankfully I got this long ago. <laughs> because I don't think I would own this today if I had to go pick it up. But uh, it is one of those games that, again, is exclusive to the Dreamcast, and so a lot of people want it. Of course, another game that is fairly collectible on the system, that, of course, is Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Um, yeah, just a really great 2D fighter, uh, but it has those amazing 3D backgrounds in there. A lot of people consider this to be one of the best 2D fighting games ever made. So I think that contributes to why this is so sought after. And then this is an interesting one. It's called Egg, which is kind of a silly name for an RPG. But if you read right below that, it says Elemental Gimmick Gear. Uh, this is a really beautiful and very interesting game. You play as this guy who has been asleep for, gosh, it's like a thousand years or 5,000 years, something like that. But basically he wakes up in this kind of steampunk slash post-apocalyptic world. And then he pilots this, this little personal mech around. Now what's cool is that as you can see here, the graphics are absolutely, again, just beautiful. But then when it goes to combat, it goes into full 3D. It's a unique action RPG that only came out on the Dreamcast. I've said it before, but one of my favorite things about the Dreamcast is just how many excellent arcade racing games were released for it. And you see a bunch of them here. And if you're gonna talk about the Dreamcast, you have to talk about the awesome ports of Crazy Taxi on it. I have Crazy Taxi 1 and 2 here, and these are just, they're so awesome on the Dreamcast. They're almost like a, a showcase of what a good arcade racing game can be. Uh, they still hold up today. I also wanna mention San Francisco Rush 2049. Uh, just a really fun arcade game. It's in the future, so your your vehicle has wings. Uh, one, one thing I really love about this game is the sense of speed. Also, just how creative they are in the level design. Another one of my favorite racing games on the system is Metropolis Street Racer by Bizarre Creations. Now, they may sound familiar because they created the awesome Project Gotham Racing series. And this game was notable because it came with an insane amount of tracks. There's like 260 of them in total. Definitely a must play if you have a Dreamcast and you like racing games. 
And I often mention Speed Devils on the Dreamcast. Uh, this is a great arcade racing game. It also came out on the PC, uh, but the Dreamcast version is excellent. Also, I have to mention Star Wars Episode One Racer. I often call this Pod Racer, but I guess it's just called Racer. Of course, this is based on the excellent arcade game. And as far as console ports go, I do think this is probably the best console port. I like this one over the N64 version, uh, definitely because it just has a higher resolution. It just looks better, uh, even though they both kind of play fairly similar. And of course, we just have more and more racing games. I've actually done an entire video dedicated just to arcade racing games on the Dreamcast. And, you know, it's kind of my goal to own them all. Uh, it's just one of those systems where I, I keep finding more. That's the funny thing about it, you know? Like, I'll go into a retro gaming store and I'll see one that I hadn't seen before. I was like, what is this? So I had to pick it up. For instance, just recently, I found these four games that I didn't have in my collection. And, you know, the quality is a little hit and miss here. I'll be honest with you. I mean, some of them are better than others. Uh, but I was happy to see Super Runabout San Francisco Edition. The Runabout series has appeared on several consoles over the years, and it continues to be one of those kind of budget-feeling arcade racing titles that, let's be honest, it's not very polished, but it is really fun. You know, they just don't make these kind of games anymore. Um, maybe there's a reason for that, because again, they're, they're a little janky at times, but I don't know. I find them, I find them fun. You know, I, there's there's some joy to be found in these kind of games where you're just cruising around, smashing into everything. It's a good time. Here's some more random Dreamcast games, and I guess I'm grouping these together based on that. They're for the most part third-person action slash platforming games, and a lot of these are already familiar to people. But I do want to point out two of them here. Uh, the first one being Sword of the Berserk: Guts Rage. Now, this game has definitely started to see a climb in its price over the last couple years, and primarily it's because it's become somewhat collectible and desirable to get. And, you know, I guess it's probably because it is a really decent uh, beat-em-up game. It's based on an anime that actually is pretty awesome. So that's kind of one that's cool to have in the collection for sure. I also want to point out MDK2, so that is surprisingly a Bioware game. Yes, Bioware, the company that makes Knights of the Old Republic and Mass Effect. Well, here is a third-person action platforming shooting game. Every Dreamcast owner should probably have a copy of Sonic Adventure, although it looks like my copy there is not quite complete. It looks like I'm probably missing the, uh, the artwork on the back there. Here's a game I recently picked up. It's called Floygen Brothers. I think I'm saying that right. Episode one. So this is a full 3D adventure slash platforming game that really surprised me because, you know, if you look at that cover, it definitely looks like a budget title, but I don't think it is. It looks like they put some time and effort into this. For instance, it's got decent graphics and animation and they got professional voice actors for the characters. Uh, and actually the game is relatively fun. It's just, it's a little rough in the gameplay department. It's, it's kind of weird to play today and it definitely has a learning curve. But again, I didn't hate it. This was the era when there was a lot of retro game compilations released on systems like this, as well as kind of reboots or remakes of classic arcade franchises. And you see a bunch of them here. And so I like to pick these up, and thankfully they're usually pretty inexpensive, uh, especially for the compilations. I think my only complaint is that often those compilations don't have a ton of games on them. You know what I mean? It's a CD, they could pack on hundreds of, of these old retro games, and often there's only, you know, maybe a dozen. But really, it's the reboots that are the most interesting. I think the ones that, you know, most people would go back and play, including Miss Pac-Man Maze Madness. I've talked about this game before. It's not exclusive to the Dreamcast, but the Dreamcast version is very good. And this is a really cool reimagining of Miss Pac-Man in this kind of 3D world or environment. And the same goes for Frogger 2. Again, you know, these companies were trying to figure out a way of bringing their old franchises into the modern era of the time and making them 3D was a great way to do it. And both of these games, I think, make that transition fairly well. 
Now, one of the things that the Dreamcast was definitely known for was having a bunch of high quality sports titles on it. And you see several here in my collection. Actually, I think this might be the console that I have the most sports games for. Uh, primarily just because they, they tend to fall in my lap. Usually whenever I'm buying a lot of games, especially back in the day, it would always include a couple sports titles. Uh, and like I said, you see a bunch of them here. The only one that I personally really enjoy playing, uh, again, that's no knock against any of the others, but it would be Virtua Tennis. I just think this game is really well made. And again, you know, I'm not a big sports fan, but yet I can throw this in there uh, and just have a ton of fun with it. It's just a game that I can very easily jump into. It puts a big smile on my face. I love this game. Here's some games I kind of wanted to group together because they're, you know, kind of survival horror based. Uh, the one I want to point out though, that I keep going back to time and time again, surprisingly, is Typing of the Dead. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this game, it's basically the House of the Dead, but instead of using a light gun, you type on a Dreamcast keyboard. And this is just stupid amounts of fun, but of course you have to be really into, you know, typing as a sport, <laughs> which isn't gonna be for everybody, especially if you're a hunt and pecker, you know? Like if you just use two fingers, I think this would be pretty tough. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Here's some more Dreamcast games I grouped together because, well, I didn't really know where else to put them in the video because they're all so different from everything else I have in the collection. Uh, but the one I wanna point out because I do think it's pretty cool is Omicron the Nomad Soul. This is a futuristic open world style game that was created by Quantic Dream, which is a French game developer that also made other games like Fahrenheit, Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls, uh, Detroit Become Human. Uh, they're definitely known for their kind of atmospheric, kind of genre pushing games. And this is kind of where it all started. Now this game is not perfect. It's a little rough. Uh, definitely takes some getting used to with its controls like a lot of these games of this generation. But I like this game because it is very ambitious. It's got some great ideas in there. And uh, you know, it's fun to explore the world and kind of just enjoy it. Now there is a PC version of this game and that would probably be the one that I would think most people should check out today. But if you have a Dreamcast, well, this got the only console port. Here are four games I'm kind of grouping together as quote unquote, you know, flight sims, even though Star Lancer down there is, well, it's a space sim, but uh, yeah, you know, it's again, this era where there were a bunch of arcade style flight games and I kind of miss that. And so it's fun to go back on the Dreamcast and get some of these, especially these ones are kind of a little unusual or, you know, not, you know, quite the popular ones that you would think of. Three Dreamcast games here that I would probably consider to be somewhat hidden gems on the system. I want to talk about two of those here, starting with Toy Commander. So Toy Commander is a third person action game where you play as a toy that is I guess technically alive, but basically you're a small toy going around these realistic environments, uh, basically trying to complete missions. And what I love about it is that you can swap vehicles. So you'll be in airplanes and then you'll go to a truck or maybe a tank. Uh, it's a very dynamic game, very challenging, but also really fun. And then here is Wild Metal. Now, originally this started off as Wild Metal Country on the PC, but then it got a Dreamcast port and they dropped the country. So it's just called Wild Metal here. But what's interesting about this game is that it is a very early Rockstar Games release. And the premise is very simple. You control a tank and your whole mission is just to blow other tanks off of the map. It's a cool part of Rockstar history. I've mentioned that some Dreamcast games can be somewhat collectible and expensive, but here are eight games that are not expensive. I believe all of these can be picked up complete in box for $30 or less. Some of them, you know, as cheap as 20 bucks, 10 bucks. And there are some great titles in here, including Expendable, which is a game that I think I've highlighted in a Hidden Gems video years ago. And I stand by it because this is such a cool twin stick style shooter. Now, it might help that this also came out on the original PlayStation, and I think that might be the thing that is helping some of these 
these you know titles stay relatively inexpensive and somewhat attainable is that they are not necessarily exclusive to the Dreamcast, but you know, often the Dreamcast version, in my opinion, is the better one to get. Another game I wanna highlight here is Wet Tricks. So this is a really interesting 3D puzzle game where the whole goal of it is to manage and control water. And I think this game is primarily known as being an N64 game, and that version is great, but a lot of people don't realize that the Dreamcast actually got an enhanced remake of that, and I think it's actually better. By the way, if you like this game, it actually got a sequel on the PlayStation 2 called Aqua Aqua. I don't think a lot of people know that. Here's a game, I don't even know if I would necessarily recommend it, but it is kind of interesting if you are a KISS fan like me, that of course is KISS Psycho Circus The Nightmare Child. Now, if you're not familiar with this, basically back in the late 90s, early 2000s, something like that, KISS was putting out a comic book and that's kind of what this is based on. It was this whole kind of reboot of the KISS, I don't know, like franchise or something like that, trying to basically kind of modernize it a little bit. That's why the characters look that way on the cover. They have a little bit more of an edgy feel to them. But this is an interesting first person shooter. Uh, it definitely has its fans. It doesn't feel like any other at the, t you know, at the time. Um, it's unique to KISS. So if you are into the band and you're looking for something kind of different to play, you might check it out. Also in my collection, kind of almost as an oddity at this point, was the web browser. Uh, you could get the official web browser on physical form, which again is somewhat kind of bizarre in you know, this day and age, but I do think it's pretty cool. It's a piece of history at the time that was very, very groundbreaking, especially for a gaming console. And of course, no Dreamcast collection could be complete without a copy of Seaman. Seaman is one of the weirdest pet simulation games ever created. It's both disturbing, hilarious, um, fascinating. I mean, it's just something that you cannot believe until you actually try it. It's, it's such a trip. And what you see here is that it comes with a microphone because the way you primarily interact with a uh, seaman is to talk to him and uh, it's it's definitely a, a wacky game years ago i spent uh i think it was a couple months basically i played seaman every single day and did a video on my youtube channel and uh, if you want to see some raw reaction to this game i'll put a link to it up in the uh, up in the corner there but man it's such a trippy game all right, well, that is a quick look at my entire Dreamcast collection, at least as of the making of this video. But I got a feeling I'm probably missing a lot of great games, and so you'll have to let me know down in the comments which ones you think I should probably pick up. And as always, guys, I want to thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing, and take care.